Hey guys, my name's Mallory and this is Wessie, and we're here with All About Cats bringing you a list of the top 10 biggest things that I wish I would have known when I first became a cat guardian, or really the top 10 most interesting and valuable insights I've gathered over the last uh, 13 or so years of being a cat guardian, as well as several years in the pet media industry, doing a lot of research, writing, and of course making videos like these about all things cats. Before we get into my list of the top 10 biggest things I wish I would have known uh, before getting a cat, I think I should give you a little bit of background on my experience with cats. So if you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll know Wessie. He is almost 13 years old. We adopted him back in 2008 when he was two and a half months old and he was my first cat. So he was an only cat for about six years until one day I was out for a walk in the woods with Wessie and we heard a meowing um, from off in the woods and we kind of followed the sound of the meows and came across this little brown tabby and she came home with us and she just stuck around. Eventually we decided that this cat was here to stay and we named her after the place where she came from forest. And then in addition to my experience having these two cats, I've also gained a lot of insights from my work in the cat blogging world. So since 2016, I've been pretty actively involved in cat blogging. So I've written hundreds of articles on cat care, nutrition, health, and products. And as you will know, if you're familiar with the All About Cats channel, I've also made to date over 40 different videos on various aspects of cat care. So based on this experience and interacting with the community, I've gotten a lot of really interesting insights into what it takes to give a cat a great life. Now I've seen some other videos like this and a lot of the people tend to talk about things that they realized right away when they adopted their first kitten. So they'll talk about things like um, cats are higher maintenance than you might think, kittens have a lot of energy, other basic things. But I thought it would be neat to, for the sake of this video, assume that you already have the basics uh, down and you're looking for some interesting little insights that would typically take years of cat guardianship and research to find. So with that being said, let's jump into my top 10 things I wish I would have known when I first adopted a cat. So the number one thing that I wish I would have known when I had first adopted a cat is something you might be able to guess if you've watched a lot of our videos, and it is that cats should be on a high moisture diet. This point is particularly important to me because when Wessie was about two years old, he developed a bout of urinary tract disease. After realizing that dry food um, likely was a really significant contributor in the development of urinary tract disease, we switched him to a wet food diet and he's been on a pretty strict high moisture diet ever since. So the reason why a high moisture diet is so important for cats is because cats simply do not have a strong enough thirst drive to compensate for a dry diet. It appears that cats on a high moisture diet are getting two times as much moisture as a cat on a dry diet, regardless of any additional time spent at the water bowl. And because they're not getting enough hydration, cats who are on a dry diet are significantly more likely to develop urinary tract disease, which is a very significant and very common condition affecting cats. The second thing that I wish I would have known as a new cat guardian is that brushing a cat's teeth is just as important as brushing your own. When I first adopted a cat, I thought that bad breath was normal for cats. I'd read books in which characters slung the insult cat breath, and I thought that it was pretty normal for cats to have bad breath. I didn't think that anyone brushed their cat's teeth. It was just as if humans needed to brush their teeth, but cats didn't. I mean, cats are self-grooming, right? But as it turns out, brushing your cat's teeth is a really important part of keeping them healthy. Periodontal disease is one of the most common issues affecting older cats, and it can lead to a ripple of serious complications. So once your cat has periodontal disease and it becomes very severe, toxins can start leaching into their bloodstream, and this could cause other issues throughout the body. So whether you're brushing your cat's teeth once a day or just feeding them a cat-specific toothpaste as a treat once a day, or even using a treat approved by the Veterinary Oral Health Council, you're going to want to do something every day to make sure that your cat's teeth stay clean. And the third thing I wish I would have known is that cats 
tend to be imprint scratchers. So the type of material that they scratch on as a kitten is often going to be the type of material that they're going to want to scratch on for the rest of their lives. So when Wessie was a kitten, we didn't purchase a designated scratching post, we gave him a rug to scratch on. So at the time, our house primarily had hardwood floors, so this little designated rug was a great place for him to scratch. But then when later on he got exposed to carpets and rugs that shouldn't be scratched, he still associated that texture with a designated scratching area. So we've managed to train him to scratch the appropriate types of surfaces, but at the same time, it's been challenging, more challenging than it needs to be. The fourth thing I wish I would have known when I first adopted a cat was that it is possible to train your cat. In particular, I wish I would have known that I could train my cat to walk on a leash. So from early on, we wanted to train Wessie to walk on a leash, um, but we were never able to find an appropriate harness and never really took the time to figure out exactly how that would work. So later on, when we were taking care of a litter of kittens, we were able to train a little kitten to walk on a leash. At first he was resistant, but then after a few walks and a lot of training, he would comfortably walk along the sidewalk wearing his harness. Training a kitten to use a harness and leash is extremely valuable. It's going to make it easier for you to take your cat to the veterinarian later on, and it can come in handy if you ever find yourself uh, wanting to go travel with your cat or taking them along uh, during a move. Training your cat to wear a harness and leash is just extremely, extremely beneficial. Now, I am happy to report that Wessie does wear a harness and leash. Sometimes he's not all that comfortable with it, but he definitely is more tolerant of it than a lot of other cats. The fifth thing that I wish I would have known as a new cat guardian is that cats' personalities do change over time. So when we first adopted Wessie, he was very aloof, and he was for quite some time. When he was around five, something changed, and he just became a lot more attached to his human family members. Seeing this significant change in personality, which interestingly happened to coincide with a move, I'm convinced that it really is true that cats' personalities can change and that they can become more cuddly over time. So if you have a cat who is not all that into snuggles, I would encourage you to be patient and let your cat decide when they're ready for that. Uh, you may find that changes in environment, changes in lifestyle, changes in just your cat's personality that you can't really explain can uh, affect the way that you interact with them. The sixth thing that I wish I would have known when I first adopted a cat is that cats don't really need to eat the same food. I've come to realize based on experience and research that cats can eat as varied diets as humans can. That being said, if you consistently feed your cat the same thing for an extended period of time, they can become resistant to new foods. So it seems that as long as you're keeping your cat's diet varied um, and you never let them get into a pattern, they are going to be able to tolerate a really mixed, varied diet. I would recommend this type of varied diet for a couple of reasons. One is that it ensures that your cat doesn't become picky which is going to make things a lot harder if one of your favorite foods becomes discontinued or they end up having a health issue that makes certain types of foods no longer an option or any other issue that makes a particular food that they're hooked on unavailable. You don't want a picky eater on your hands and the best way to avoid that is by feeding your cat a varied diet from a young age. The seventh big thing that I kind of wish I would have known when I had first adopted a cat is that there is a right and a wrong way to bathe your cat. There's a tip that I learned from Dr. Karen Becker and it is to minimize your cat's exposure to the water as much as possible. So this is not like you're filling up a bathtub and you just step into this warm bath you're going to want to never submerge your cat, certainly, and you're going to want to immerse them as little as possible. So by putting down a towel in the bottom of the bathtub and just kind of splashing water gently over their body, you're able to minimize exposure to water and make the bath time experience much more pleasant. Like the observation earlier about harness training at an early age, getting your cat accustomed to water at an early age um, is going to be really beneficial because sometimes you are going to have to bathe your cat. 
It's not going to be something that you have to do on a regular basis, but if your cat gets some oil on them or something toxic, you're going to want to give your cat a bath and ideally it should be a relatively pleasant experience. The eighth thing that I wish I would have known when I first adopted a cat is that vertical territory is really helpful. So you've probably heard about this notion of vertical territory. Um, it's elevated spaces where your cat can overlook the world. So as you probably know, cats like climbing trees and they feel a lot more confident when instead of being these little creatures kind of scurrying around at everybody's ankles, they're able to survey the world from above and kind of be above the humans of the home. This is particularly helpful if your cat is rather shy or falling, again, a little bit lower on the dominance hierarchy. Now, you don't necessarily need to provide a tree for your cat. You can get shelves or you could even just give them a designated bookshelf or some other area where they're able to get some space above the ground. The ninth thing that I wish I would have known when I first adopted a cat is that you don't need to use traditional cat litter. So I think most of us start out using a clumping or possibly non-clumping clay cat litter. This is the most popular type on the market, but more and more people are becoming aware of pine pellets as an alternative. So you can either use something like feline pine, which is specifically marketed for cats, or you can get regular pine pellets that are intended to be used as equine bedding. These are sold at farm and ranch supply stores and they are incredibly economical compared to traditional cat litter. So if you want to save a lot of money on cat litter, I would recommend considering this as an alternative to traditional litter. It also produces significantly less dust than a clay litter. It does not contain any fragrances or additives that might be irritating to your cat. And I think a lot of people report that it smells a lot fresher than a typical litter. So again, pine litter isn't for everyone. I've used it on occasion, but my cats don't really like it that much. And I've never really gotten comfortable with sifting it out, but I know that a lot of people really enjoy using this rather than a traditional litter. And I think that if I had discovered this earlier, maybe it could have become a regular part of my litter box system. And the 10th and final thing that I wish I would have known as a new cat guardian is that it doesn't really help to worry about your cat. So for the first probably seven or eight years of Wessie's life, I worried about him all the time. So I was constantly worrying about his health and how long he had left to live. I was just always worried about his well-being. Um, but after I was finally able to set that aside and appreciate his presence in the moment, I've been a lot happier. And over the last few years that both Wessie and Forrest have been working with me on cat product reviews and these videos, I've been able to appreciate both of them a lot more. I think that setting aside some of that worry has really allowed me to uh, experience them in the moment and uh, enjoy what they have to offer. So that's it for my top 10 things I wish I would have known as a new cat guardian. I hope that you got some interesting insights from this. And if you have any insights of your own, things that you would like to share with other new cat parents, please drop them in the comments below. I would love to hear about what you've learned uh, as a cat guardian. If you like this video and you're interested in cat product reviews, buyer's guides, and information on all things cats, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you get the news every time we release a new upload. Thank you so much for your support and I will see you in the next video. Bye!